evening and once again welcome you all to the final day of international virtual talk series on revisiting english language and literature in the digital era hosted by the school of english kumaraguru college of liberal arts and science coimbatore and for today's session on understanding language through the lens of linguistics we have with us dr anandita sahu assistant professor in linguistics from the department of humanities and social sciences indian institute of technology madras Uh, Dr Sahu pursued her PhD in linguistics from the IIT Delhi and her areas of expertise include linguistic typology uh, syntax indian english grammar language acquisition pragmatics historical linguistics language and communication studies moreover her research papers are published in many reputed journals and she has delivered her invited talks at many international platforms and now i think it's time for me to hand over the session to Dr Sahu welcome ma'am I think it's better now. Can you hear me now? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, good evening, everyone. It's indeed a privilege to be here. To uh, so, COVID has made a lot of things unique and different in in a lot of sense. Like uh, as far as the deployment of technology is concerned. So, I'm sitting here in Chennai, in my office, without moving an inch. I'm addressing an audience. that is going to um sort of be with me for an hour so it's only technology that can uh, that can do this and this stupid um virus is making it happen so that's what i would say so on that note um let me start my presentation uh, as it has been mentioned the talk is going to be primarily uh, linguistic centric and uh, i understand it's a uh, um i would definitely have a group of audience who would be quite inclusive and diversified in nature so uh, to begin with i just want to keep a couple like i just want to give a couple of uh, clues in which direction my talk is going to um go ahead so by training i'm a linguist and the introduction was nice this was wonderful to mention that i do work on language typology syntax in an english grammar and at the same time i'm also equally focused on pragmatics so i try to approach language from a technical perspective or from the from the theory of innateness uh, like or or you can consider uh, for me language is a mental phenomenon and then i my concern is going to be primarily focused on um, the spoken variety of language and i approach it the way people speak or community speaks or the or a group of people if you are using or if you are speaking in a particular fashion whether the language has script or not whether uh, whether this is old or new or it's classical or new or modern so that really doesn't matter to me for me language is a mode of communication that is just one aspect or one function of language that i have but it it, it has an ability to do way more um, other things that it can so uh, my focus for this particular talk is going to be um how a linguist is going to understand language the previous talks if i'm not wrong was was mainly literacy centric so uh, i'm going to talk about a little different in terms of the direction of understanding of language is concerned so i would uh, share the screen um i have a couple of slides i'm not sure how much i can cover from uh, the slides that i have had so most probably i would have uh, something like 40 minutes to talk or something what is the time limit it will be really nice if i can get an idea about it okay so the 40 minutes, 40 minutes 40 minutes okay all right so i'll share the slides first can you see my slides is it visible because it's spread yes. over my screen now yes, so yes, i guess it's visible any one's response yes. okay yes. thank you um so as the title suggests this is understanding language through the lens of linguistics um a couple of quotes that i would uh, first like i would start with the talk with this 
Chomsky, in his uh, seminal work, Language in Mind, he has said, when we study human language, we're approaching what some might call the human essence. So language is exclusively um, there, or lang language is, as a biological entity or as, or, or as a mental phenomenon is exclusively found with the humans. And this is one of the distinctive qualities that we have, and these qualities of mind that we are, so far as we know, that is unique to man. No other species on the earth is going to use language, and we are the only species that uses language. And um, you, you may talk about anything, any action that you undertake, whether you play, you fight, you make automobiles, or you sort of argue with other people, or, or any like for any kind of action that you do as a human, you you involve or you try to take or you use language as a whole. That is why uh, if uh, those who have read uh, Victoria Frumkin an introduction to language, uh, it's been mentioned that we live in a world of language, and we we talk to our parents, we talk to our friends, rivals, enemies even. And in each of these cases, you see the involvement of language. So starting from the bus drivers to total strangers to your very intimate relationship, holding people in your life. So with everyone you deal with, one of the most common communication um, tool that you have in hand, that is that is language. And uh, on that note, uh, I would I would like to mention what Norbert Hornstein uh, would say. Uh, his statement is that fish swim, birds fly and people talk. So just like swimming is very innate, like very like very intimate to the fish, and then uh, flying is something that the birds are synonymous with. Similarly, talking is something that the human beings are synonymous with. And uh, for all these activities that I have mentioned so far, you need to have language, or you language is your possession, the possession of the human beings. And this is perhaps more than any other attribute that distinguishes humans from other animals. If you talk about other biological instincts, so maybe a we have quite a bit of similarity with other other animals in the world, but the but when the matter comes to language, it's it's the humans who have um, who kind of have this essential quality that makes us different from the other um, animal species on the world on the earth. Okay, so on that note, let's see what language is and how do the linguists approach it. So there are two important terms that I'm going to reiterate over and over again. So I'm going to talk about what is language and then how the language, linguists are going to approach it. So um, to begin with, when I, when I ask you the question, what is language? The first statement that I would have here is that it's been quite a lot of like quite a long time. We really don't know. I don't want to go into the evolution of language. There are multiple theories and then there have been disagreements. There have been continuous push and pull between how language might have evolved. So I'm not going to go into that that direction but one thing that is clear and that is substantiated and which is which is quite firm is that human beings have been using language for a long time and starting from the dawn of the human race and then to the present time language has been there with us for almost all the aspects of our communication system however writing is a recent invention so um, if you think that certain languages, they have scripts and certain languages they do not have. So that's the reason why the languages which have scripts are, are kind of more privileged or they are more important. They should be given more attention and they are, uh, they are more, uh, you know, they have more power. Yes, so socioculturally, economically, they might have had uh, more power than others, but that doesn't mean that if a language has, um, has a writing script or a script system, then this would uh, this would better than any other language or for not having a script is any way lesser than any other language in this in this world so writing is a very recent invention prior to that human beings would definitely communicate using language and language was mainly in the spoken domain of this race and uh, um, then the other thing that you need to remember is that there is no human community that does not have uh, a fully formed language so that this is also something that we need to that we need to uh, keep in mind languages they evolve it's not like a stagnant pool of water it's not like a pond rather it's like a river it and evolves it is dynamic and the rules keep changing new things are being added old ones get d deleted from the system so considering it's a set of rules and it's a full-fledged system so we, we must keep it in mind that the language as a system, as, a, as the communication system, if you are approaching it uh, from that angle for this particular talk, then please remember that it's, it's an ever-changing process. And a lot of languages do not have scripts. That is what I have already mentioned. 
And uh, the next important thing that you need to know about a language is that when a child learns a language, the child learns to speak first before reading and writing. So that's another instance or that's another proof which substantiates that writing um, is a much later phenomenon biologically also or or, or the or the proficiency centric if you if you look at a language as a as a as a proficiency centric phenomenon then uh, the child language acquisition would help you in a in a sense that speaking is a more rudimentary skill reading and writing they are going to come later and uh, uh, to keep everything together when when uh, when i mention what language is and when I said language is a mental phenomenon then you, you need to remember or you need to keep it in mind that language is a biological instinct and what is more interesting thing about language is that everyone is concerned about language because we all speak a language you might speak the Telugu or I might speak Odia or somebody else might speak English, Hindi, Japanese or Chinese number of languages might vary the, this is what we call small l which I'm going to come back to it a little later maybe if time permits. So we all are speaking small L's, but there is something called big L, which is the mental uh, faculty that we have uh, in our brain. So uh, considering everyone is talking or everyone is, is using some language or the other, if you are a healthy human without any language disorder or without any deformity, so you would be speaking in a particular language. And considering everyone is using language, everyone is concerned about language. So, however, just by being concerned about language is not enough to understand the nuances or to understand the complexities that this formal system involves. So we must pay certain attention to two different questions or two different aspects in uh, like as a linguist, if you want to think about um, think about how la how we should approach uh, approach language as a, as a linguist, then these are the two primary concerns that you should have, whether a particular speech like the kind of the, the the way you speak as a native speaker that is correct or incorrect and the other aspect of language research is going to be how a child acquires a language okay so uh, now now since we have understood that uh, language is a very common phenomenon that we all of us we have it in our in our day to day life no matter whatever action you undertake or whatever function that you do you do involve language as a tool and starting from your, uh, as I just mentioned, starting from a bus driver to a stranger to, to with a person with who you have a kind of intimate relationship, maybe the mother child. So in each of these domains, since you are using the language, um, you must understand what language is when I approach it as a linguist and what are the complex system that I'm talking about. I just mentioned that language is a complex system, which is a combination of certain uh, rules, certain like a set of rules and regulations. So then the question comes when you know, when you know a language or when you, when you think that, okay, I know something about language. So then the question comes, what do you know about it? So what is that? What is the knowledge of language that you have? So if, if you say, I know English, what all do you know about English? When you say, I know Telugu, what all do you know about Telugu? If you say, I know Japanese, what are the informations that you have about um, the languages that you are talking about? So if we do not focus much on the small L's or these individual languages now, and taking you to the bigger questions that we have, um, the knowledge of language involves what, or like what are the things that, that you, would, you would like to know as, as a person who is concerned with language? And there are multiple uh, professions, there are multiple domains where people approach language from different ways, from different means. And I just mentioned my focus is going to be how a linguist is going to approach it. So these are just a couple of points that, that I would like to highlight. What are the different professions in the world that we have, um, they are concerned with language. So there are people who are the speech correctionists. What they do, they do find out the difficulties and then the impediments in language use. Then there are people who teach English. So a lot of us, we have a career in English language teaching. So when, it, when you say ELT, you focus on English language. So even if you are talking about one particular language there, yet you also have to think about the basic theories or the more fundamental theories of language acquisition. It could be the second language acquisition or, or uh, the countries which have English as a foreign language. So even if you are dealing with one particular language called English, it will be always nice if you know the basic questions or the theoretical or the fundamental questions that language as a set of rules and regulation that has got to offer or language as a mental phenomenon 
that has got to offer or language as a biological instinct as steven pinker says that has got to offer then there are foreign language teachers there are literary artists who use language as a literary medium then there are psychologists especially the psycholinguists those who are uh, trying to understand the interface between language and uh, language and human brain slash mind then there are missionary who also um, who also deal with language a lot of if, if you if you look at language and religion interface you would see that okay a lot of um, a, a lot of la like a lot of missionary they have contributed to uh, to language to the to the growth of language in certain senses by translating the literary works or oh, sorry by translating the 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 regional uh, sorry the 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 religious works so they also deal with language anthropologists also deal with language in terms of language and culture the historians talk about language and society and eventually the philosophers language as a big discipline the philosophers also talks about um a philosopher also talks about logical syntax which is also part of the language however um eventually we have to move to uh, how a linguist deals with it so then when you when i say understanding of language from the views or from the from the perspective or through the eyes or through the lens of linguist then what does a linguist do that is what my question is going to be so a linguist is a language specialist and when you say specialist uh, i i would i uh, i often like most of us the linguist we encounter the first question when we say that we are a linguist then the first question that we encounter is how many languages do you speak uh, for your kind information the linguists are not supposed to uh, or the linguist it's not necessary that the linguist has to um, has to speak in a uh, speak in in multiple languages when you speak multiple languages you are a different person there is a different word for it we call it uh, we call it uh, let's say polyglot but then when you are a linguist you need to understand the theoretical nuances of it or you try to understand language from a scientific uh, point of view or from a from a systematic point of view and what we do as linguists we work on an organized body of information about language and we try to um, we try to focus maximum on the spoken variant of language and then uh, most of our discussions that center around the empirical evidences and when i say empirical evidences i'm talking about the linguistic evidences that you have the empirical data that we have so uh, we try to or we tend to stay away from the fiction or or um, or the other words i would say most of our work that revolves around the investigation and analysis and when i say investigate investigation and analysis i am focusing on the empirical evidences or the linguistic evidences that we have if i say hindi is is one type of language and english is the other type of language in terms of the word order parameter that we have let's say hindi is going to be an sov language and english is going to be be an sv uh, svo language then i have to show the proof i have to tell or i have to i have to make sure that sorry i have to make sure that i have enough evidence to show look this is i eat mangoes or i i eat an apple so one is subject then the verb then then the object so that is why english is uh, english is an s v o language when i move to hindi then maine apple khaya so then maine which is going to be the subject and apple is going to be the um, the object and khaya is the verb so through the empirical evidence i'm going to show that these two languages are typologically different so that is what the linguistic typology that uh, that uh, that i generally work with like uh, in the in the domain of linguistic typology i work right so then uh, uh, so this is this is what i would focus on in terms of the investigation and the analysis of languages concerned and then how how a linguist and the other language professionals they can be related uh, this is this is kind of a correlation that we have drawn here the relationship of a linguist and other language professionals are almost similar to that of pure chemistry and chem and chemical engineering so if you are if you are talking about the the, the uh, a discipline called pure chemistry which is a pure science and its application in the chemical engineering so that kind of a relation you would find out between the relationship of a linguist and other language professionals and uh, um, i'll just end this discussion about linguistics here before i move to other things is that the more you know about a language more you know about yourself because language is something that that is uh, that has an intimate connection with your identity with your culture as well as uh, uh, as well as your personality and your thought process in that sense so that's the reason why uh, when i raise the question when you say i know a particular language what are the informations that you have about the language what does what does this convey and does it does it give us enough information 
um, about you as an individual uh, when when you say uh, that okay my information or my knowledge about this language is something like this so these are the questions that the that the linguists are going to deal with okay now i would i would tell you what are the different domains of uh, language study that the that the linguists are engaged in the first thing is that when you say knowledge of language you must have the knowledge of words so if i say i know english that means i should be i should be able to um, like you should expect that i know the word system uh, in english i i should have an idea to identify okay this could be this could be a word and this is a non word i must have uh, a fair amount of idea or or i must know that how the system of sentence construction works in english what are the sound structures in english and what are the pragmatic interpretation of different words and phrases in this language so all these things together is going to give you the knowledge of a particular language a knowledge of words knowledge of sentences knowledge of sound constructions or sound uh, or, or the knowledge of speech sounds um the knowledge of meaning associated with the with the phrases verbs and then the and other kinds of uh, uh, combination of speech sounds so everything together that will be the semantic aspect of it so everything together when you have the information about it then you know that okay you know something about a language so um just not the sounds but sound patterns similarly just not the words but the organization of sounds as so organization of words when you put the words together you're going to get the sentence so then if you do not know enough about the the organization or the patterning of the words that means you don't have enough information about this language so that's the reason why uh, when when you try like when you teach english as a language you must be you must be very uh, clear that what exactly you need to impart in terms of your teaching learning uh, classroom centric discussions so um, to to put it together i would tell you these are the different domains of language that we study as a linguist and these are the various levels and primarily uh, we study language from a scientific uh, perspective or in a scientific manner and we try to understand the systematicity of language and when i say systematicity systematicity in different levels so the phonological level which deals with uh, with sound morphological level deals with words and morphemes syntactic level uh, that talks about sentences semantic level that is meaning and pragmatic level how it is interpreted in the real life so the rest of the things uh, that's going to be primarily the abstract discuss discussion centric uh, questions that we deal with syntax and semantics but when the matter comes to pragmatics we are trying to figure out uh, how um, how language is being interpreted or how language is used in the regular day to day life okay so uh, these are the different domains of language that linguists study um, but then you must remember when i'll just give you an example probably that would help you to understand how uh, uh, how our understanding of language is going to be different from others so uh, when you know english you know that english doesn't have let's say uh, let's say a th sound th which is a dental sound is not available in english so th this is just one tiny information or one tiny um, tiny um, evidence that 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 i would like to give you or that i would like to discuss when i say that okay i know enough about english so the speakers of english they would uh, they know that they would not have a construction or they would not have a word which would deploy uh, which would deploy the uh, th sound similarly when you when you hear the word boy and if you are if you are a speaker of this language let's say you know english as a language then the, then as a speaker you would know that boy means it's a male human and preferably a younger male human so the information that you have about the boy is enough like you should have enough information to interpret what boy would mean in this language and obviously when you when you hear like when you uh, when you hear the term boy you should be able to or you have that you have that enough information in your in your brain slash mind that you can differentiate it from a girl from a from a toy or from any other language so that means you have enough input and what input the linguistic input about english so that you can identify what a particular language is and using that information or using that intuition that you have you can distinguish one word from the other and that that kind of information is related to the meaning centric information in language 
So um, now you think about it, other languages that you know. I give you an example of English. If you are a Tamil speaker or if you're a Telugu or, or a Malayalam speaker, when you hear a word of your own language, you should or you have enough expertise to add to to figure out or to or to um, make sure that you you can understand how or what could be the the semantic interpretation of this of this word and how it's going to be different from others. Okay. Um, then these are a couple of things that uh, that the linguists study to to understand language. The first thing that we focus on is the speech community. For us, when you where if something is a language, it must be spoken by a particular community. If the language is not spoken, that, that you, you, you can always bring in examples like Latin and Sanskrit, uh, which are not spoken by any community anymore. Um, of course, somebody can give a counter argument that is a particular village in India where uh, in Karnataka where uh, there are Sanskrit speakers. And then we do use this language for certain kind of um, like let's say religious purposes, but how about Latin? Latin has been a dead language. It, it has a vast literature, but we do it. It's not really um, a language which is spoken by people anymore. So, uh, as a linguist, our focus primarily remains on the speech community, a community or a group of people that um, that uses this language as a tool or as a as a medium of communication. So that is what we call a uh, speech community or the, the definition uh, it's written here, the whole set of people who communicate with each other directly or indirectly via a common language. So the, the, they are the ones who are going to be our first and foremost target when we talk about or when we think about language as a as a whole. And then in most of the cases, the language boundaries are not that uh, that distinct and uh, um, sociocultural and political um, components or the political, um, you know, uh, kind of elements that that has a significant contribution to the to the growth or death of a language. And most of the time, the speech communities are fairly large. If you if you have uh, if you have a well known language in the world, for example, English. There are several hundred million speakers across the globe. They, they use this language. So that's why uh, this is one of the most widely spoken languages in the world. On the other hand, we have languages like tribal languages, which have only a few hundred speakers. But that doesn't mean that they are any less as a language than English. So uh, if, I, if I talk about India as a linguistic area, we have multiple tribal languages spoken in various parts of the country. I come from Odisha, and in my state, we have Languages like Khadiya, uh, Juang, Kisan, all of these are tribal languages. Uh, they are not socioeconomically and, uh, and uh, yeah, politically that powerful because the number of speakers, that's very few. And then they don't really host a uh, significant power um, in case of socioeconomic status is concerned. That's the reason they are not as powerful as, as Odia in my state. And Odia is not as powerful as Hindi uh, in India. And Hindi is not as powerful as English in the world. So uh, it depends which place you are talking, like which what is the what is your sample, and then which what is the focus area. If you're if you're talking about a particular country, then what should be the language that has power? In terms of the world's perspective, what should be the language that has power? So uh, the speech communities of English, they are way more like they they are like they're too big in terms of when you think about the speech communities of tribal languages. But um, for a linguist. English and a tribal language like Khadiya, they are equally or nothing is less important than anyone uh, uh, to, to think about it or to consider it as a language or to call it a language, whether you uh, whether the language has a script or not, whether it is socioeconomically powerful or not, it is no less a language than its more powerful counterpart. So um, I so we always focus on uh, on the uh, speech communities and these are a few languages very quickly I'll just go through uh, this is not going to be really the primary concern of my discussion so um, considering we always talk about English remember that English is just one language in the world there are multiple the world speaks around six thousand languages and our country being India which is a multilingual country we have. Um, quote unquote again tentatively I would say some 700 languages are spoken in our country and these are a few language families that you need to know so Indo-European, uh, Indo Austronesian, Niger Congo and then Sino Tibetan all these language families we have and uh, the last one we have Austroasiatic and Dravidian these are the major language families in the country and then um, this is the world map 
and then you see the blue ones that is the uh, that is the indo european language family that we have and which has the which consists of uh, or which comprises of maximum number of languages and then it has it is widely spoken in multiple parts of the world almost uh, like the it, it is quite widely spread over the world in terms of the indo aryan language family indo european language family is concerned and in india it becomes indo aryan i'm not going to go into that discussion for the moment so these are just to give you an idea how um, how world is a is a diverse place uh, in terms of language use is concerned but certain languages are more powerful than other languages as as i have mentioned english for sure has been the lingua franca this is the link uh, this is the link language or the or the connecting language this connects us with the world so definitely it enjoys more more power more prestige and more privilege uh, but that doesn't mean that we need to ignore other languages in the world no we should not do that and uh, being a being a human like as uh, since since we are the only species on this earth that understands language that uses language we must be equally we must be equally empathetic to everyone um uh, no matter whatever speech community uh, he or she comes from okay now let's look at it uh, now since we got to know these are multiple languages in the in the world and india itself is a multilingual country and we do speak so many languages now what is the nature of human language what is so special about human language and how it's going to be different from other kinds of communication system that we have so one thing i would i would reiterate and i would uh, i would emphasize here is that human language is very complex and it's a it's a very it's a complex system which involves a lot of rules and patterns and it has a systematic pattern in in a sense um which makes it different from the other communication system of the of the animals so um this is what uh, i i keep on um telling my students that you might sometimes you might think that your if you have a pet and then let's say the dog that you have um she understands what you say like when you ask or when you give orders like go fetch a ball or sit or stand or or run so these kind of commands when you give uh, or to the to a trained dog they seem to execute the command they seem to understand it so you're right they definitely understand what you say but then that's they don't understand whether it is a noun or a verb and whether there is a pattern to it or not and when they respond to you there is a limited pattern of their response their communication system they would not have a grammar for themselves when you are thinking about animal communication so very quickly i'll just go through uh, what is the nature of human language though i meant like since i mentioned when you know a language you know about its words sentences sound system meaning and the pragmatic uses so uh, this is that, that's that's the reason you need to remember it's just not uh, it's not all about just words there is more into it so uh, it also involves knowing the inventory of sounds of this language it also involves knowing the meaning of it so when you say uh, and remember the form and meaning this relation is absolutely arbitrary in 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 more like in all the languages in the world so when you say window with this one this looks like a window right this picture is a small window here in english this is window in the uh, in italian something else in russian something else in hindi we call it khidki and in bangla i think it's jan uh, janla or something like that and then in malayalam it's jalakam telugu it is kitiki so all these so do do you really see why this particular structure would be would be called a window in english but a khidki in hindi without any like they don't have any a uh, sort of um phonetic similarity so window would be in one language it is called a window the other language it is called khidki so then that that gives us enough clue that this form and meaning it doesn't really have any um any you know kind of connection uh, if you if you try to find out what what would be systematic connection not really so in most of the cases the form and meaning relation is absolutely arbitrary so that's one that's one interesting aspect of human language that we have and besides this the other aspect of human language is that it's creative aspect some of you are creative writers you write fiction you write uh, you write poems or or you write uh, other kinds of let's say creative writing has multiple aspects you write stories so uh, creativity is one of the one of the finest functions of human language 
so when if you are a human if you know a language and if you are communicating using any language and uh, in in this context i would focus on english so then it enables you to combine words to form phrases and it will help like it also just being a human it also enables you to combine phrases to make sentences so just as a human you are creative enough you may or may not produce literary pieces of writing that's a different story so if you if you create literary pieces of writing that's wonderful very nice but just by being a by being a being a human you have enough um, ability or you are you are capable enough to to be creative and in what sense you just have a handful of words and phrases in your uh, in your like at your disposal and with that handful of uh, a handful of uh, words and phrases you are able to um, create innumerable number of constructions and you can express or like you can you can talk about your feelings your emotions in multiple ways so the words phrases that you have in hand is limited but the expressions that you can create is unlimited and that is what is the creative linguistic knowledge that human beings are bestowed with so just by being a human you have this ability to talk about or to be creative enough to express millions of emotions that you have or millions of expressions that you would like to convey okay and then um, so the second thing uh, that that's the first point uh, i was talking about and then the second point is point is equally important when i approach language um believe me if you if you uh, uh, like i i am not sure whether you have thought about it or not there is absolutely no dictionary which will have all possible sentences in language it's it's practically not possible and why it is not possible because human beings are creative so the creative aspect of human beings uh would make it uh make it so wide like just by being a being a human you you can create multiple number of instances of the same like multiple number of constructions using the same phrases just by playing around with the uh, with the words so that's the reason why it's not possible uh, to have all possible sentences in any given language in any dictionary so that's that's what the creative aspect of human beings are or that is what is the creativity of linguistic knowledge because of your creativity in the linguistic knowledge you have the ability to create um unlimited sentences for unlimited expressions and emotions that you might have in your um like at your disposal okay and it is also um the other instance of human creativity in terms of language is uh, the ability to produce new sentences which has never been spoken before so that means uh, as a as a language user if you if you are speaking in like if you are a native speaker of english or for that matter whatever native language that you are that you are using you have the ability to produce new sentences which were not spoken before and uh, just by being a human you can do that and the other side of the story is let's say somebody else is using this sentence like you encountered a completely new sentence um for the first time yet just because you are a speaker of that language you can understand this if this is a right construction that means not only as a user or not only as a speaker but also as a receiver you have the ability to to use your creative instinct so as a creative uh, like as a as a creative person you not only can create new sentences you can also understand the meaning of a new sentence which you have not encountered before so in both the cases your creativity matters a lot and um, so i would quote chomsky 1959 here uh, as i just mentioned you may or may not be a great creative writer so but that doesn't mean that you don't have creative instinct or you don't have creative capability so let's see what uh, what is the statement here so not every speaker of a language can create great literature but you and all persons who know a language can and do create new sentences when you speak and understand new utterances created by others so these are the two important things that you need to remember which would remind yourself that you are a creative person and whether you create literature or not that's a secondary aspect that would be wonderful if you create good literature that would contribute to the growth of your language that would that would enhance the vocabulary of the language that you are talking about so that's that's a different domain altogether 
but just by being a human you are creative enough to create new sentences when you speak and to understand new utterances when others created it let's say somebody else spoke a construction on or somebody else used a sentence which you don't know you encountered it for the first time but just by being a human you are creative enough to understand what was being said by that so that is what the that is what the creativity of the linguistic knowledge that we have as humans and uh, um since i quoted chomsky i would like to uh, highlight a couple of things here um so uh, prior to uh, prior to uh, let's say skinner 1957 the behaviorist approach uh, sorry prior to chomsky's claim about uh, language being a innate mechanism so when i say innate mechanism that means it has been a part of your human brain like that means when when the human child is born it she already has something called a language acquisition device which is why which is an abstract concept for sure um which enables her to acquire the language that the family speaks let's say a child is born into a, a telugu speaking family or a tamil speaking family so uh, nobody has to teach the child to speak that language uh like if if the parents are speaking in tamil so uh, the child doesn't have to be taught there is absolutely no need for that um so the child would pick it up automatically uh, so that is what we call intuition centric or that is what we called let's say innateness centric aspect of language so just by being a human child you can acquire it without any external intervention nobody has to teach you uh, that okay listen this is the grammar of tamil this is the grammar of telugu or malayalam or kannada and then uh, now since you are 2 years old you have to speak this language and this is a set of rules nobody does that no parent ever does it so since the children they pick it up uh, without any external intervention that is what gives us a clue that human brain is is immensely powerful or immensely creative to acquire multiple languages at any given point of time and the other instance why language is considered as a biological faculty or a biological instinct something like uh, uh, just like other biological milestones human children also get uh, like they they uh, human children also get the 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 language or the language centric milestones at the right point of time 6 months something like let's say the the babbling stage comes at 4 months and then 6 months there would be one word then the multiple words then comes comes your full sentence so by the time the child is 2 years old um she is able to speak like full grammatically correct sentences but nobody remember nobody actually taught uh, any kind of grammar to the child so that shows how powerful like how how uh, what kind of potential does a human brain have so these are the theories uh, uh, or th these are the claims it came after uh, chomsky critiqued uh the behaviorist approach of skinner bf skinner those who uh, are familiar with this I, i don't think i would spend much time on that uh so chomsky's claim is that contrary to skinner's behaviorist theory language is not limited to stimulus response behavior and this is an interesting example um so uh, skinner would say language just like any other a uh, stimulus response centric behaviors language is also something like that since you have since you get some kind of stimulus as a response you speak so uh, skinner's argument would be uh, the current features of the linguistic environment that that is kind of um, giving enough clue to the speaker which is why the speaker uh, uses it as a reinforcement so the speaker has to follow the reinforcement which is why the language would be an outcome this is like a response centric approach uh but chomsky would say no that's not right like there there is a lot of uh, argument uh that happens but the interesting story uh would uh, i wouldn't go into the much detailing of uh, how chomsky critiqued it but just one instance which would catch your attention let's say somebody stepped on your uh, on your toe or stepping on one's toe the immediate so going by the stimulus response centric behavior the only response would be either you would you would have a scream or you would grunt right so you are walking somebody just uh, stepped on your toe what would be your immediate response so going by the stimulus response centric behavior either you are going to scream ah or you are going to or you are going to grunt right so these two are the immediate responses of this particular action stepping on one's toe however if you are creative enough which is not and since not if since you are creative enough you can always 
uh, if, since this is not created uh, controlled by the stimulus you can always say thank you very much for stepping on my toe because i was afraid i had an elephantiasis and then now that i can feel it hurt i know i don't so that means i i was thinking i had a particular problem let's say some kind of nervous issues but then after you stepped on my toe i realized that i don't have this issue it it hurt me and since it hurt me now i'm sure that i don't have that kind of problem so this is a creative expression of stepping on one's toe and only a human is going to do it and the second thing is that since you are a human you can do it so there are two things one is only a human is able to exp express this in a creative way after being stepped on um your toe and then uh, then the other other side of the story is that it's only sorry it's only the humans can do it second one being a human you you have the ability to do it so you may you may choose not to do it but you can always express it um following a creative a creative idea that you have so this the response of this statement to this function the response to stepping on one's toe if the response is this that gives us enough clue that human beings are creative enough and this is this is one of the strongest evidence of having creativity of linguistic knowledge similarly the other example i i would get it like i would uh, cite from kennedal 2003 uh, look at this uh, sentence it doesn't really um, this kind of a sentence doesn't occur uh, regularly or frequently in the discourse so let me read it so daniel boon decided to become a pioneer because he dreamt of pigeon toed giraffes and cross eyed elephants dancing in pink skirts and green berets on the winds uh, on the winds uh, on the on the wind swept plains in the midwest so is there any problem with this sentence grammatically no absolutely no problem you can always dream about something you can dream of a pigeon toed giraffe so is it really possible a giraffe having uh, having or or, or a giraffe Uh, that has a pigeon toes or can you ever have an elephant with uh, that has a that has cross eyes and it's dancing not only dancing it is wearing pink skirts and then it is also wearing the green berets and uh, that is where is it found it is found on the wind swept plains of the midwest so the human creativity can take you to any length to any level and you can you can have constructions as complex as this so that means when you know a language so what is that when i say knowledge of language and how would how would um how holistically what is the holistic understanding of knowledge of language it is the knowledge of language that you have the knowledge of words sentences phrases sounds meaning pragmatic uses everything together would give you the holistic meaning of knowledge of language and that makes it possible to understand and produce new sentences so when you know a language wholly when you are familiar or when you have enough command over its word system sound system sentence sentential system pragmatic system and semantics of it then you not only create new utterances or not only create new sentences but you also it is possible for you to understand new sentences so that is what or that that's how complicated the system is not complicated i'll not use the term complicated rather complex that's how complex the human like that's how complex the natural language or human languages in spite of all the complexities that it has it has its own idiosyncrasies but it it definitely has a certain set of rules that 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 is governed by or or or, or this language is or or this any language that you are talking about or the natural language that you are talking about this is governed by a certain set of rules which which the linguists study meticulously which the linguists study systematically because language is just not a mode of communication for us it is it is the it is the path to understand or it is it is the domain or an area that has to be studied carefully to understand your brain like your mental considering considering language is a mental phenomenon this is this is what helps you to understand a human brain and there are multiple domains or the multiple disciplines that 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 is that is associated with linguistics which helps us to understand how complex and how creative and how systematic uh, the communication system or the language as a system is okay um so i how much time do i have
Uh, we, we have our, almost in the close now. Almost can, at that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I'll just I'll just show a couple of uh, um, more slides and then I'll stop it. Uh, so look at this. Uh, since I mentioned about uh, this is from again from Ken, uh, 2003. Um, you may refer to the book those who want to know more about uh, how linguists understand language. Uh, uh, like we, we we love to talk about language and we want everyone to talk about it. That's a, that's a concern that linguists have. So uh, in this case, look at this picture. Um, this is uh, uh, this is a comic, right? So here is a salesperson, like a, a and here it is written cells, and these are cleans. These are different bottles that has certain things. Uh, this particular thing cleans. This particular thing tones and nourishes, firms, protects smooths and rejuvenates all of this so then look at how uh, creative human beings can be in terms of language usage so uh, this one is saying hello i'm i'm mabel i'll be your pamperologist today so then the immediately the the customer is asking what what do you say this is pamperologist i've never heard about it before so isn't it a completely new as so the, the 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 expression of the customer it clearly shows that this particular word is new to her even if this word is new to her, she would take her, maybe she would take a bit of time to understand what the other person means when, when the word pamperologist has been mentioned. But it, this does have certain kind of interpretation um, since this is about a salon over there, okay? So when it is pamperologist, then she's saying, oh, you're, you're a dermoflatterist. So when you hear the term dermoflatterist, so you can, you, can, you can find out something, what it could possibly mean. So the dermoflatterist definitely would not talk about um, talk about a cuisine, or it will it will surely not talk about something about a dog or a cat, because from the word itself you get an idea what it could possibly mean, and that is what the creative aspect of language is. Your aesthetician and your guide to the new world of cosmeceuticals. So then for uh, cosmeceuticals, so then that's another uh, another question that comes to the uh, comes to the mind of the of the customer but whatever uh, I, I don't have enough time to read it uh, line by line but then you can always refer to it so what i want to say is that because you are a human you are creative and you you have enough information about a particular language no matter or irrespective of whether you are a creative writer or not as i have mentioned being a creative writer you do like you contribute more to the language that's for sure but it's not necessary that you need to be a creative writer uh, to to prove your creative spirit or to prove your creative instinct just by being a human if you are able to understand uh, the new constructions in terms of a sentence or in terms of words then also you are creative enough to um, like you are creative enough to understand new construction and also to create new construction so that means don't worry if you if you if you are not able to write a write a piece of um, let's say like you you're not able to write a story or a novel or a poetry so that that's different kind of um, aspect of language altogether but just by being a human you're creative enough to to um, to encounter like to to comprehend the meaning of the new constructions and to create new sentences when you speak through your speech also you can show your creative instincts okay um, then uh, the other aspect of knowledge of language this was all about the words you can always refer to this one it's very interesting how uh, these are different uh, new words have been coined and then uh, eventually the customer could understand what uh, what this particular um, place is all about and what she she meant when she was talking about all these heavy words so you can always go through it later but just to wind it up uh, it's not just the words you can also talk about uh, sorry i think okay you can also talk about the sentences so when you when you say sentences that means it's it's basically the combination of a, of a few words so as as a native speaker or as a user of a particular language you can distinguish between a sentence and a non sentence even if it looks like perfectly grammatically all right there are certain sentences which would you would get a oh yeah it doesn't really sound like a sentence so when you look at this one a and then john kissed the old a little old lady who owned the shaggy dog that's fine that sounds like a sentence but the same words when they are reshuffled it doesn't remain a sentence anymore 
so who owned the shaggy dog john kissed the old lady if you if you match the words all the words that is there in the first sentence the same words are there in the second sentence the first one is a sentence but the second one is a non sentence so this knowledge this is also a kind of linguistic knowledge that as a speaker you have you may not be a native speaker of english but if you have enough expertise in this language uh, by your listening speaking reading writing all the four skills that the english language teaches and uh, they talk about uh, sorry that they talk about so you have to uh, the not just not the knowledge of words you should also have the knowledge of sentences and as a human if you are comfortable or when you say i know a particular language that means you are able to distinguish between uh, between a sentence and a non sentence the similar words the first one is a sentence the second one is a non sentence okay so john is difficult to love uh, john is difficult to love it is difficult to love uh, it is difficult to uh, to love john that's fine so john is anxious to go is okay but it is anxious to go john is is not acceptable it sounds to be it looks not sounds it looks grammatical um it it is difficult to love john and it is anxious to go john though they sound similar but there is a huge difference d is a sentence but f is not you cannot say it is anxious to go john if you have enough expertise in english if you if you know enough about this language if you if you have enough knowledge related to english so then uh, john who was a student flunked his exams exams is flunked student or john or was who john that's not going to be a sentence the same words have been used here just the chunks have been uh, reshuffled here and there and that is what uh, makes it different so uh, the, the the one given in 1g is fully a sentence but the one given in h is not a sentence so this is this is just not uh, just not the information of words but it is also the information of uh, information of uh, uh, sentences that you have okay so um, i would skip a couple of slides uh, unfortunately we don't have enough time to discuss semantics and pragmatics but uh, to wind it up whatever i have discussed by far uh, language is something that we use uh, on everyday basis uh, for all kinds of actions that we do and this is and chomsky's ideas about language would be this is the innateness of the fundamentals of grammar in the human mind so for us the mind is important and then this leads us to understand the human brain language is a wonderful tool and this innate features of language language capability or the capacity it must be a set of biological structures that's what chomsky would say and uh, gradually over the period of like during the process of evolution it's only the human beings that have got language even if your uh, your pet cat or dog or the monkeys or or the parrot that you have they might imitate a couple of things but their communication system is going to be different and which is why the human language is creative is it just too complex and too creative to be compared with any other kind of communication system that the humans have and when you when when i say um, i know a language what kind of knowledge do you have what is that you know about it you 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 not only know about the words of this language you also know about the sentence constructions you know what is a word what is a non word then you know what is a sentence what is a non sentence the same kind of phrases or the words they have to be they have to be organized in a particular way so that it can be it can be called as a sentence so all these questions that the linguists they ask when they try to understand language as a wholesome unit that is guided by certain rules and regulations so this is why we call it the scientific or the or the technical study of language and it is always substantiated by the empirical evidence that we have so mostly or primarily we work on um on the spoken aspect of language that doesn't mean that no linguist work on the written variety people do uh, uh, do work on the written um, domain like written aspect of language too so there is a domain called stylistics which talks like which deals with the uh, writing style and then uh, nowadays a lot of other um, you know interfaces are emerging uh, the content analysis when we do um, sometimes we also take newspaper discourse or the different kind of media discourses are also analyzed to understand the nuances of language so for sure the written aspect is also a very important um, domain of language analysis uh, but uh, as far as the primary concern of the linguists are concerned to understand language and its knowledge 
we focus on the community centric uh, like the, the speech communities people who use this language as the day to day communication um, communication process during the day to day communication process so with all these informations about language i would like you to uh, to see this sentence this is a uh, very commonly like most popular construction that we talk about when we when we discuss how a language is grammatical yet it doesn't give you any meaning so this is the famous uh, sentence of chomsky so colorless green ideas sleep furiously so there is absolutely nothing wrong about it those who know english if you have enough information like when you, when i say i have knowledge of english you would see that okay colorless green ideas that's the subject and sleep is the verb furiously is the adverb so it's perfectly fine so there is absolutely nothing wrong about the the sentence construction this is this is not a non sentence this doesn't look like a non sentence but if you try to understand what is the meaning what is that what, what kind of interpretation do you have how can something that is green be colorless and how how can uh, something sleep or someone sleep furiously sleep ideally should be a peaceful affair so how can how can you do it furiously so these are the these are the complex questions that involves when you try to understand language through the lens of linguist even if it looks perfectly fine it's absolutely grammatical yet it doesn't give you any interpretation so that means there is something called syntax semantics interface so just the grammatically correct uh, arrangement of words would not be sufficient to understand language rather you have to understand what is the meaning associated with it and if the meaning is not associated with it like if if you are not able to understand anything in terms of the meaning then then it's uh, then this would also be considered as a non sentence so these are all a part of the knowledge related to a language so the knowledge of language involves knowledge of words knowledge of phrases sentences speech items like the speech sounds pragmatic interpretations as well as the semantic system involved in it so that's how that is how a uh, language looks when you look at it through the lens of a linguist thank you yeah so that's all i would stop uh, screen maybe okay so i'll be really happy if i can get some questions i think that's all about um through the linguistics lens to understand language good evening ma'am that was really a very clear and comprehensive presentation that you have made today and uh, i just got reminded of maya angelou's quote language is man's way of communicating with his fellow man and it is language which separates him from his lower animals so that was a wonderful inspiring presentation by you thank you ma'am for that so the first question is from ms subhashini ma'am how can we apply okay. behavioral theory to enhance reading skills um okay so um as a like my my understanding is that behavioral theory would not be sufficient to to explain uh, the language centric question so uh, considering i i i come from chomskyan school of thoughts and then i do believe that this is language is innate to human beings so keeping it restricted or keeping it narrowed down just to stimulus response behavior centric question would not do justice to understanding of language so about reading skills particularly if you talk about reading skills so then maybe exposure like uh, when when you have more like when, when you consider reading uh, as a reinforcement uh, activity like when you when you give some kind of positive reinforcement um, after the reading then obviously that would probably help you to to get a positive motivation in that sense to to read more but then if you if you ask me the question uh, how it's going to help you as a linguist or as a language uh, enthusiast so then i would say that no i'm not a person who is going to support the stimulus response theory much but uh, to enhance the reading skills make sure you have enough positive um, positive uh, kind of positive reinforcement make sure that when you read something you are going to gain something and that gain could be in any domain it could be materialistic gain it could be uh, intellectual gain or it could be it could be maybe i don't know what other kind of um gain things that you can talk about but as 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 long as you make it more uh, you know more uh, response centric then reading is going to going to be enhanced uh, but for sure uh, i wouldn't apply the the stimulus response 
approach to uh, to the understanding of language. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. So the next question is from Mr. Ram Kumar Rakesh, and his question is: How far is our basic language skill effective in improving learning a foreign language? Oh yeah, so that's a good question. So learning a foreign language depends a lot on the linguistic environment that you are in. Um, there is something called I couldn't really cover this discussion. There are two things. One is the descriptive approach. The other one is the prescriptive approach of language learning. Uh, unfortunately, most of our uh, learning is primarily language learning. I'm talking about be it second language or foreign language, it has mostly been, you know, um, prescriptive grammar centric uh, approach we, we have had. There is a set of rules. Active is this, passive voice would be this. If this is a sentence, the tag question would be this. That's how our school system or our education, the conventional education system has been dealing with the questions related to language. Primarily, that's the reason why we find language learning a tedious process. But if we can give the right kind of exposure right kind of, kind of environment, then obviously the foreign language learning is going to be more effective. For example, if you want to learn French, uh, attending a French uh, class here in India, and if you compare it with going to France and staying in a, in a group of community speakers, so then that kind of, uh, and the, like when, when, you are, uh, when you have more, uh, like when you have a rich linguistic environment where French is spoken, that would be uh, easier for you to to um, learn this language. So uh, then the formal school system or the formal uh, training based kind of a system that we have uh, in, in India, let's say, uh, for that matter. So um, Thank you, if you want to, yeah, if you want to just the last point, if you want to uh, be a quick learner of a, of a particular foreign language, then my suggestion would be to, to try to get a or, or to have a better facility or the better environment where uh, your target language is used more frequently even if let's say for that that's for sure not everyone can travel to france to learn french that's not possible so even if you are going to um, like you are taking help of a particular instructor make sure that the methods of teaching uh, that is more interaction centric if just by giving a set of prescriptive rules that's not going to help much um, in terms of learning a foreign language. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. So I think that answer that answers for two or three questions by the participants. So now I hand over the session to Dr. Swagata for proposing the vote of thanks. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you. A very good evening to all. I think we have, as we say, all good things come to an end. So does our webinar also came to an end? after uh, you know six days uh, schedule but again it is also said that effect of all good and intellectual things start happening after the sessions are over so with that hope uh, we all like to you know thank all the participants who have been here for all the five days six days i should say and uh, being uh, you know very engrossed in the discussions have their comments and questions all these things suggest that uh, we did something good and um, please follow our website so that you can come to know about the you know latest programs and events which we will be having thanks from school of english community guru college of liberal arts have a nice time and uh, hope to see you soon again thank you all thanks thank you thank you it was really a pleasure to be there i i see a lot of questions but maybe People can write to me because I um, yeah I think yeah. it it will be better. Thank you so yeah, much. So quite a few questions there. So my yes, email yes. ID is anindita at the red ID dot se dot in. So you can always uh, drop an yes. email if you. Right. So I would yeah. request all the participants. You can just ask the resource person directly. I think that will be you know more fruitful discussion. And uh, yeah. that's all from our side. Have a nice evening and a happy weekend. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Bye.